All right, welcome back to another uh, episode of the Banner Tree Podcast. Uh, man, today, Ryan, we're we are outside of spring, looking into summer, and uh, the weather's perfect around here right now. We had a little bit of rain uh, not too long ago, and uh, weather is just perfect right now. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's starting to come to the time when uh, spring is is already came and summer's here and uh we we're having a mediocre we had we had a little bit of heat wave but we've had some rain and some things but fishing the water looks good and everything is is coming in vacations will be happening soon and youth camps oh, yeah. and all the things that we get into but it's beautiful beautiful time of the year spring is sprung and and here we are that's right yeah rachel and i got the uh the camper out um memorial day weekend and we went out took the dogs out and had a, a it was really like a dry run for us because we take uh we take the camper to myrtle beach every year and this year we're going for two weeks in july yep. and uh so it was a dry run for us to get the baby situated figure out how we were going to do that she did fantastic and then while we were there uh got an, an opportunity to intro uh water or really intro swim water and moving water to maybelline and so she did great with that, and we had, you know, reels and stuff on all that stuff. She's a launcher, and, oh, uh, yeah. dude, she is just – she's on fire for retrieving. It, it's pretty amazing. We I was actually at the vet this morning, and uh, the vet and I were talking, and, and she's very – I call her cautious. She kind of has her circle and of people that uh, she'll – you know, she lets uh, love on her and stuff, but then she's got other people she's cautious with. and um, But but it kind of uh, – it kind of – that equation – uh, plays out for the good because she sticks right by my side the whole time she was off leash at the campground and um but when you pull out a bumper or, or food you know she just goes crazy and she's yeah. been really really easy she's such a sweetheart she's got a, a really sweet nature and um you know i know we've talked about it before but i'm i'm excited to see uh the puppies that her and pastor produce because i think that there's going to be a, a dime a dozen in in one of those so oh yeah absolutely i think uh the things i had seen uh you know on, on the real i went with you at, at that campground or, or anything or watching it but i watched it uh, online even in the past weeks uh and seeing uh her launch and really i think uh you posted a video or uh, a reel just the other day of um pastor right beside her and you really see the stature of her she is going to be yeah. a, a small but yeah. tenacious dog and her launch I, I i remember i posted on that on that uh facebook uh post of it uh the rocket launch man i, I mean yeah. she could she launches out in that water and it was a great retrieve and and pretty actually swift moving water i mean look yeah. pretty swift there so yeah she i mean this nature took over and yeah she's small stature she uh the the vet today said that he'd never seen a lab um so small she's 42 pounds and oh, she's yeah. right at 10 months so uh in month of june she'll be one year so that's all uh that's all fun but i'm i, I know uh, we're kind of limited on time today but i'm going to start out with a uh, a scripture like we always do and this is isaiah 41 13 i know isaiah 41 10 is a really popular verse but i'm going on down to 13 here so it says for i'm the lord your god who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear i will help you and you know it's funny rachel and i um talked about this scripture the other night and um you know, I think that a lot of people say time heals all things and time may heal some things in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I think that one, one very, uh, popular quote a lot of times is, uh, this too shall pass and it will, it, it will pass. But a lot of times when you're in the midst of, of a situation, that's not the first thing that's in your mind, you know? And I, I look at this scripture, um, and it says that he will take a hold of our hand and he says, do not fear. I'm with you. I will help you. And that is, it's a, such a comfort knowing that in, in our days when, when times get bad or when you don't know what to do, when you have stresses at work or you have stresses, um, family situations or financial situations, anything like that. And, and your mind is bogged down on what the enemy wants you to focus on. And, and, you know, you look at the scripture and, and the Lord says, I'm right here with you. I got you. We're going to get through this. Just trust in me. Lean on me. So uh, a, a big theme for Rachel and I uh, over this past month, as we, you know, I, I talk about, we, we do a little um, scripture and, and just a devotion every evening with, with Sophie. 
And one of those things that kind of keep on playing itself back is, you know, talk to him daily, talk to him throughout your day, spend time with him in the morning, spend time with him in the evening, and he's going to prepare you for the things that come. And so this has been something that's been on my heart and on my mind. And, uh, and, you know, I just wanted to share that here on the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think when you, when you think of the, the scriptures as even he will be our God till the end, you know, where he leads us, uh, in paths of righteousness, or you look, you look, the psalmist says that Isaiah says that, that he will be our God, or he'll, he'll lead us with his right hand and he'll, he'll direct our path as Proverbs says. And you look at all those things. It's like when you're in the midst of the trial, sometimes you just focus on the problem and not who on who God is, but God's a big God. He's able to handle it. He has all the answers and really it comes to trust in him. And when we trust him and give him the praise, he directs our path. He leads and guides us. And that's the comfort is really that we have a Savior, a Lord, who isn't a distant God. You know, yeah. I think I think that's how a lot of people think of God. But God left his throne. Jesus left the throne and he came at, to become one of us so that he could pay the price for our sins. And that's a powerful thing. And not just that. When he left, he said he was going to send the Holy Spirit, which we believe in also, um, and so as, as a God every day, and even in that, the greater things we would do in his name. And so we have the power of God living inside of us, and that helps us to get through situations. And when I think other people see that, they're, they, they're like, man, I don't know how they uh, get through cancer. Or I don't know how they deal with the loss of a parent, or I don't know how they deal with those things. Those are real situations that happen, but our trust and our confidence isn't in ourself and in our flesh. Our confidence is in a God. God who walks with us and who is beside us and who picks us up and carries us in those moments and we trust in him fully and when we do that the peace of God comes on our life and we make those strong decisions and so that's a great word for the day uh, and for the month really you know as uh, until the next time we we, we see uh, those uh, these people on the podcast and on the video I mean it's a great word that that he will be our God he will lead us with his right hand and we can trust in him and have confidence in him so that's a that's great right. word today. That's right, and hopefully that follows you out through uh, the month of June. We've got a strong Facebook following, especially on these oh, yeah. uh, podcasts. So, if Absolutely. that uh, if that speaks to you guys, or if you have a testimony at all, just leave a comment below in the in the section Absolutely. below, or even on YouTube. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, but you know, we just came out of April and May, and April and yep. May to us is turkey season. It's a different type of bird season, but we uh, <laughs> we moved forward from duck season into turkey season. And last last we spoke, we were talking about fishing, but this episode is all all turkey and uh, and Ryan, I'll I'll kind of let you uh, you go here on this one because I know that you got your uh, your first turkey here and and uh, yeah. we had a little reel last week of yeah. of you got your fan back and your mount so I'll show that yeah. here too but uh, you yeah. know kind of give us a rundown of of what you and I uh, saw there that day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I, turkey season was good. We we broke it up with the fishing season, as what you said, with uh, going striper uh, or striper trip. But I, I ended up getting out in the woods. It ended up being four times, which is not not a ton, but um, yeah. we got out in it, and I had I had some good experiences with some people. But I got to hunt with you one day, and uh, that that one was was the money trip for for me. I had I have killed a Jake before, um, defer, and that was actually I look back as five years ago, and. And I've did. I, I, I'm not an avid turkey hunter by any means, right. but I've been out there numerous times, and I've been with other people as they they've killed, you know. Um, but for me to be behind the barrel and and do it, it, it was pretty pretty awesome. And and to do it with you and and yeah, with Kenny, yeah. and it, it was we caught it on film, and uh, it couldn't it couldn't win any better. But um, the day started out it was beautiful. Sunrise was amazing over over the mountains of West Virginia, which is as we're hunting eastern uh, turkeys, and uh, you know, so we get out there that morning and uh it, it was kind of um it was kind of a calm morning actually the birds were starting to chirp but it wasn't like really like crazy goblin off roost or anything like that or on roost and uh we get up to the top of this ridge and uh we um we pitch some calls and i know some people are there like oh man that's what everybody say you just pitch some calls but that's what you do <laughs> you get yeah. up on the ridge and actually uh you showed it you showed a clip uh, a couple weeks ago it's funny it's me on on x and we're here and geese squawking and i'm like yeah. they're over there they're over yeah. there you know we're, we're uh, more interested on where those, those birds are going because we're gonna have to figure that out by september <laughs> absolutely and so but uh then then uh the, the uh, kenny uh he, he 
he started sending some calls and and we had a uh, a gobbler respond and uh so we kind of got we got set up on, on on a gobbler and um he puts me uh he, he talked about putting me on a tree, and then me and you were like, man, for the camera angle, maybe I should move back. And so we moved back, and he got behind us. He's calling, and this bird was on a rope. I mean, he, he literally, he, he called it in, and, and, and I'm a man. I, I, I have no qualms about this. The first shot was probably 40, 42 yards uh, on, with my Benelli, and I missed. I mean, I, I went back to the shot cam, missed over and to the left a little bit. It was like behind a tree, and, and so, you know, uh, that depression sets in a little bit you know after you miss yeah. a shot it's like man I, I mean it it came in it was right where it really needed to be and uh you know I missed and uh so I was kind of down on myself and I remember Kenny told me and even yourself is like man we'll probably it's early we'll probably get another opportunity oh, yeah. about that and, time uh, we'd heard probably seven different birds yeah, yeah but there yeah. the property was a great property and there was there was more opportunity and so uh we go on down and we go in the uh a valley and then we come uh we we're up on the mountainside and we we call we don't hear anything we go down into the valley and he calls and it sounds like they're they're right on us basically i mean mm -hmm. they're not that far and he calls again and it's like they're moving to us and so we get set up pretty quick you're right to my left and um Kenny's behind us calling and it ends up it's three gobblers coming in and uh we kind of set up with the camera and we're 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 looking and and I'm sure you've got this on video I haven't seen uh, all the video yet but um we were um uh he, you were like they're coming on the right and and I swear I'm like I was so focused on the front that I didn't sure. he's like and you're like they're right there they're right there they're right there and uh it, it, hindsight 2020 which I've never killed a bird but we could have probably doubled up if I'd have been smarter on the decision well, sure but, but I mean you know when you, when you when you pounded that thing dude I I jumped up I was so happy for you and, and oh yeah uh, you know that I've heard a lot of people say, and I'm not a, I'm not a turkey hunter either. We we, we yeah. say we're we hunt turkeys. We're not turkey hunters. I think there's right, a difference right. there. Maybe somebody that hears that you'll you'll know the difference. But uh, yeah. But uh, I've heard people say that you know they'll flop, and get back up, and take off, and you got to go hunt them just like you would you know a deer, oh, yeah. or wounded deer. So I wanted to make sure we got that thing down. And, and uh, oh yeah. So anyway, I'll I'll, I'll let you keep. Yeah going. yeah yeah. So the, so the bird came in, and I've got it on on the shot cam of where it comes in, and and you've got we, we've got it on. Uh, I'm sure it's on my um, the GoPro, but anyway, it comes in. It's probably I would say 18, 20 yards, and yeah. I put the bead on it. And my gun shoots up and to the left a little bit. So if you look at the shot cam video, I, I knew that, and so I had that, uh, and and I smashed it with uh, the TSS, and uh, man, I jumped up and, and really, I think I Rick Flair wooed it a couple times, <laughs> and then we run out there and ends up. It's a it's a great bird. It's close ten and a half inch beard over 20 pounds, inch and a half spur. One of the spurs was broke off because it was fighting. But, I mean, like, for a first bird, it is it was awesome. And just an experience to catch it on film with you there and uh, with Kenny there. I mean, it, it was the excitement of the moment. And really, when I go back and think about it, it was a highlight hunt. I mean, you know, we've had some highlight hunts together, but it definitely made my my love for that in the moment. It felt, it felt really good and uh, made me definitely want to go back together, you know, and, yeah, and to capture right. it and yeah. uh so go ahead well i was just gonna say you know it, it, we uh we did film a lot that day and i've still got to compile that that video man i tell you we've got so much footage footage from that video and just trying to get yeah. it all all organized and figure out how we want to display that story um is yeah. a challenge but i i've and i've been trying to do it on my free time uh, and and it will be posted i promise it will be posted yeah. but the uh you know the um the crazy thing uh, about that that hunt is is it's so hard. It's so hard to try to really get that on camera because oh, you yeah. don't want to, you know, you don't want to spook them. And I was, the last thing I wanted to do was move and those birds leave because I yeah. knew that this was going to be a great opportunity. And, and I think we got them on GoPros maybe, and, and I might yeah. be able to, to stretch the, the footage and, and see, you can see it a little bit, but it's not the greatest footage, but the story of that day was awesome. I mean, you'll see, we, we went into an old house and we, oh, we yeah. ran into a mama Fox and she was hissing oh, yeah. at us, scared me to death. I was out. <laughs> there and yeah. uh and you guys you know you guys braved it out but i'm when i hear something like that i it i you don't have to tell me twice i'm gone 
<laughs> yeah, it was funny. We we get in this. We're in the middle of nowhere, actually. I mean, we are in nowhere, West Virginia, and there's like there's a, a little stream, and and we're and the guy who was taking us, he's like, you're gonna see this house. You're gonna be like, man, why is this here? It's a two story house, and I mean, it it was massive, and it was built probably in the 1800s, I'd say, or whatever, early 1900s. I mean, it's and it's it's got wood floors, uh, but half is dirt, and we go in that room, and and that thing starts growling, and and. And then B, B's like, there's something in here. He's like, I'm out of here. And yeah, I'm like, dude, Kenny, you like, got your a pistol? Bear or something. <laughs> there's something there. And uh, did you get that? Did you get that footage with your phone? I think I think I did get some of that okay. footage. Yeah, there. I got to get that from you because I I look went back and looked at the handicam stuff and yeah. but you can't really see it really well. But I I was gonna yeah. I was gonna see because. Um, yeah, that was a crazy experience. That whole that whole hunt was awesome. You know, Kenny Adams was you know props to him, dude. He he did an awesome job of calling and setting yeah. us up on birds. And uh, so we had it. We had a good time. And Kenny and I went out a couple of days later, and I actually did get a really nice video of a gobbler on on, on full screen. And Kenny couldn't see it because there was a tree. It's it's such a hard thing. So anybody yeah. who you know the hunting public and those guys, anybody who has those YouTube channels, then they're getting those kills on on film. It's way harder than than what oh, you might absolutely. think. So so uh, you know, kudos to all those people. I, I you know I went out um, early season. It was a couple days into season, and I I went uh, into Oakvale on a piece of property, and I sat out yeah. there in the morning, and I got impatient, which normally, you know, patience kills a turkey. Yeah. We've talked about Absolutely. that. And so I got impatient. It was about 8.30. I got up, and I figured I was going to walk out on the ridge. I walked out there, hadn't heard anything all morning. Uh, got back in my truck, and I actually went up on top of the mountain, walked across the ridge, didn't hear anything there, came back down, and then I, I got to the gate where the, the field was as I was hunting that, that morning. I just rolled down my window, scratched a little bit to see – and sure right. enough, man, I heard a gobble. So I got my stuff out. I took a decoy. I ran out in the middle of the field. I I put my decoy out in the middle of the field. Yeah. And um and then leaned up against a tree. Man, that thing spit and drummed. It probably took him 10, 15 minutes to come in. But I was patient on him and he came through and uh and I hammered down on him. And uh dude, he was a nice, nice bird. Before I before I knew about Apex is when I Yeah. The Apex Outdoors Challenge, which if you don't know about that, look it up. It's you know, they pay you out, and, and it's all dependent on number of people who sign up in your state. It's right. a really good program. Um, but that was before I knew about that. It was probably one of the bigger birds that I've killed, and right. it probably could have placed somewhere. But, you know, it, you live and learn. I, I have the tool for next year, and I'll be entering the Apex Outdoors Challenge. So if anybody <laughs> in West Virginia wants to join, please do, because we, we need numbers. That's what that game is about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and so you, you got the bird in the, but before I did, and and so that even took off some pressure even sure, for absolutely. when you came out. He, he was like, you, B was great to just film. I mean, really yeah. didn't even take a gun and just really right by my side and or or behind me or whatever it was, and and so that those things are we we killed two turkeys. Of course, we we didn't tag out, which but we had a great time. We yeah. we had a great time this season, and it was just an awesome time to get in the woods, see God's creation, and spend time together, and so two of those eastern uh turkeys ha have fallen and uh yeah. hopefully we'll get back to them next year it's it's been a it was a great uh spring really you know from from striper fishing to to turkey hunting uh, in these great mountains uh the appalachian mountains and uh or, and blue ridge even for yourself i'm sure is is just the beauty of it is is if you've never visited west virginia in Virginia, the south part of Virginia, you've got to come. It, it is so beautiful. We've got incredible tourism attractions with the New River Gorge, and 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 you know we talk about it all the time, fishing with New River Trophy Outfitters, and just just an incredible place to be able to float and catch world class smallmouth, and and really see these turkeys work in in these mountains. It, West Virginia is is definitely almost heaven, and uh, I'm thankful to be a part of it and share it with you and and with the listeners. Uh, we're so thankful for you guys and. It, if you enjoyed this, man, give it a like, a comment, a share on any of the posts. Um, we would love to give us a follow and shoot me and be a message at any point. We we love connecting with you guys, and if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to follow it. Uh, we try to do this for you guys to be able to listen to us and, and just be a part of the Banded Retrieve. We've always said this. It's all about the, the, the people, and, and, and the people make it great. And so we are faith, family, and legacy, and we'll continue to do that and share these stories with you guys. And we love you guys, and we hope you have a a great uh, month of June and we'll see you back in July.